Hello, it's Rick Smith from Trinity United Methodist Church in Prince Frederick, Maryland. And once again, this is the daily prayer for, of course, Monday, the 17th of April. And I have to admit, I screwed up. I should have done this one last week for last Monday. But I didn't. But better late than never, I guess. So it kind of brings forth still the Easter story, if you will. And I'm going to be reading from part of what uh, Reverend Jim had been doing earlier. I'm reading from John chapter 19. And it's just going to be one simple verse. It's going to be the um, 30th verse. And it says, when he had received the drink, Jesus said, it is finished. With that, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. The point I'm going to bring across here is we all celebrate Christmas very much so. And that's fine. I mean, to celebrate the birth of our Savior. But then... Without Christmas, there's no Easter, and without Easter, no reason to celebrate Christmas. And I think that point's been made fairly well. But to bring it full circle and to show you how this has all been done, one of the famous Christmas carols that is sung every year um, during Advent is Hark the Herald Angels Sing. And I'm sure most of you could sing that with the lyrics by memory. You wouldn't have to look at them. But to make sure I don't screw this up, and I'm only going to take parts of the lyrics, to be honest with you. But it says, uh, Glory to the newborn King, peace on earth and mercy mild. God and sinners reconciled. How are they reconciled? By Jesus' crucifixion on the cross. So therein ties the Christmas and Easter stories. It goes on to say, um, Hail the Son of Righteousness, this is in the second verse, Light and life to all he brings, risen with healing in his wings. Um, born to raise the sons of earth, born to give them second birth. Second birth, or being reborn. So, yeah, we do need to sing glory to God. I mean, we sing, hark the herald angels sing, and they did. But we need to say glory to God for this newborn king and for the Savior of the world, because uh, 33 years later, he gets nailed to a tree and is crucified. But the more important part, three days later, he is no longer in the grave. He has defeated death. He has defeated sin and defeated Satan with one motion. Think about that. So we've tied Christmas and Easter all together now. And it just took, for an example, this one song to get you to realize they are very much related. So think about that Christmas song during Easter. And then during Easter, think about the Christmas song. It all comes together. They're all tied in to see the big picture of the whole story. Let's pray. Father in heaven, you sent your Son here to save us all from ourselves, and more importantly, from our sins. You have reconciled our sins by putting your Son on this planet and allowing him to be crucified to pay for our sins. Something that just goes beyond imagination 
It goes beyond mortal thinking. Nonetheless, we thank you for this, this wonderful, wonderful gift that none of us could ever repay. None of us deserved. And yet your grace has allowed us to be reconciled and forgiven. We thank you ever so much for this and pray this in your most holy name. Amen. Some people are like, Easter more, some like Christmas more, but realistically, we kind of need them both, don't we? Uh, without question, without the resurrection after the crucifixion, there's nothing to rejoice about. But the fact that it did happen, we have a lot to rejoice about. Keep this story in your heart each and every day. Keep Easter and its story in your heart each and every day. Spread the news around. That's what we're here for. We're here to spread the good news that Jesus Christ is the Messiah and Lord of all. This is Rick Smith for the Daily Prayer from Trinity United Methodist Church. No minions in uh, this office. Sorry. And I want to remind you that Wherever you are walking, just like those guys walking from Emmaus, Jesus is walking with you.